हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज समंदर सिंह राठौड़ पीजीटी हिस्ट्री के वी टू जम्मू कैंट नाउ विल स्टार्ट विथ हिस्ट्री चैप्टर टू न्यू किंग्स एंड किंगडम्स सो नाउ विथ दिस चैप्टर आई विल बी शोइंग यू नोट्स ऑल्सो विच विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल टू यू नाउ इन क्लास सिक्स वी हैड रेड टिल समुद्र गुप्त दैट इज गुप्ता पीरियड आफ्टर द गुप्ता वेन नाउ विल बी टॉक अबाउट दीज वन थाउजेंड ईयर्स इन क्लास सेवन फ्रॉम सेवन हंड्रेड टू सेवनटीन हंड्रेड and 50 in this we'll be getting a few dynasties which had established their rule between the 7th and the 12th centuries so that is in between 500 years these five dynasties had their big empires in india so now let's look at the locations gujar parthiyaras in rajasthan rashtrakutas in maharashtra and northern karnataka palas in present day bengal cholas in tamil nadu and near the kaveri basin chamanas again they are in rajasthan and parts of haryana from ajmer till delhi today's delhi which was earlier known as indra trust now they established the empire between the 7th and the 12th century between these 500 years and we'll understand how these new empires and new kings emerged so we come to the book the first after discussing this now the first topic which comes is the emergence of new dynasties so how do do the new dynasties emerge so again we'll go back to the notes Emer the emergence of new dynasty in this emergence of new dynasties samans this word is very important and we need to understand this word this word play, played a major role in the emergence of new dynasties now what is the word actual word meaning of samant by the 7th century there were big landlords or warrior chiefs in different regions existing kings often acknowledged them as their samants or subordinates so these samants were subordinate to the king and they were administrating a part of the king's empire on behalf of the king they collected taxes and administered the daily functioning of the empire and in that process they collected the tax from the peasants and they kept their own share with them and some of that share was sent to the king so that means the samans are subordinate to the king the empire now they were expected to bring gifts for their kings whenever there is a function in the kingdom there is any festival so the samans they will be presenting gifts to the king or the overlord and provide them with military support also for example this king goes to war with some other empire and another kingdom so the samans under this king will be providing military support to this king that means the samans had their own military also as samans gained power and wealth now they the samans have gaining more power becoming more powerful and becoming wealthy they de they declared themselves to be mahasamans or mahamandaleshwar so that mahamandaleshwara means the great lord of a circle or a region mandal means a circle and maha means great so these people have adopted titles which which are glorifying them and saman from saman they become mahasamans or mahamandaleshwar and once they started to declare themselves independent they think that they are now powerful they can challenge their own king or they can challenge their own overlord and through that process they declares themselves independent these things happened with other samans and we will talk about which samans gained independence and established their own empire first example in this is the rashtrakutas in the deccan deccan is the part of the southern india this part so rashtrakutas they established the empire in maharashtra and northern karnataka present day telangana andhra pradesh but they were actually subordinate they were samans of earlier empire which was existing in this place which was of the chalukyas so now initially they were subordinate to the chalukyas of karnataka in the mid 8th century danti durga a rashtrakuta chief he was a saman he overthrew chalukya overlord and established his own empire he became the king and established his own dynasty now he 
परफॉर्म द रिचुअल कॉल्ड हिरण्य ग्रह लिटरली मीनिंग गोल्डन वोम हिरण्य मीन्स गोल्ड एंड गर्भ मीन्स अ वोम नाउ बाय परफॉर्मिंग दिस रिचुअल विथ द हेल्प ऑफ द ब्राह्मणास इट वॉज एक्चुअली कंसिडर्ड एज अ रीबर्थ दैट मीन्स ही मे नॉट बी अ क्षत्रिय बाय कास्ट वेन ही वॉज बॉर्न बट आफ्टर परफॉर्मिंग दिस रिचुअल he becomes a kshatriya so considered a kshatriya by the other people also other such examples are kadam dynasty whose ruler was mayur sharman and he established an empire in karnataka same way gujar pratihara dynasty's uh, chief harichandra he performed the same ritual in rajasthan and established his empire as we go back to the map this is the gujar pratihara dynasty and it was established by hari chandra both were brahmanas who gave up their traditional professions and took to arms successfully establishing kingdoms so this is how the new dynasties emerge and empires emerge new kings emerge kingdoms emerge now we'll go to the administration in the kingdom let's go to the book first administration in the kingdom now what was the administration of these dynasties in these 500 years from 7th century to 12th century so again we'll go back to the notes kings adopted high sounding titles such as maharaja adhiraja the great king overlord of kings or titles like tribhuvan chakravarti lord of the three worlds so these high sounding titles glorified these kings try these kings are trying to glorify themselves try to prove that they are really powerful the king shared power with samans with association of peasants traders and brahmanas now the power was shared between all these resources were obtained obtained from peasants cattle keepers artisans traders etc so to run this administration administration in the kingdom the resources how did they get the money they got the money from the taxes collected from the peasants cattle keepers artisans traders etc these resources were used to finance kings establishment and construct temples and forts so this is being financed into administration building very big temples and forts now kings always wanted to build huge temples because this would try to glorify them and show that they are very powerful functionaries for collecting revenue were recruited from influential families and positions were often hereditary that means the people in the administrations were from the influential families that is they had some or the other relation to the place of the father and this cycle will keep continuing now we come to prashasti and land grants this is the next topic prashasti and land grants now in last year's book we had read about priyag prashasti or the allahabad inscription and in that we had read about samudragupt and his uh, declaring himself equal to kubera yam these gods so now let's understand what is happening in the prashastis from 7th century to 12th century prashastis contain details that may not be literally true so what now historians think that these prashastis they are actually not true because the king himself told his officers to write these prashasti and glorify the king so that means they may not be true we cannot just blindly follow them rulers wanted to depict themselves as valiant and victorious warriors so now why did if we do not believe them then why did the kings try to glorify themselves in these processes because they wanted to glorify themselves as big warriors now these processes were composed by learned brahmins the kings often rewarded brahmanas by land uh, grants of land so that means these brahmanas when they composed these prashastis and in which they glorified their kings in return they got gifts from the kings and in these gifts they were given land now these lands were recorded how now the land which has been given to the brahmanas were recorded on copper plates which were given to those who received the land so this copper plate was a proof for generations to come that this land belongs as a gift to the brahmanas by the king 
I'll show you in the uh, book how the these copper plates work. See, this is one of the copper plates, and as you can see, something is written on these plates. So these are the records, and this copper cannot be decomposed. It is kept as a proof for generations to come. Now, one prasasti written in Sanskrit and found in Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh, describes the exploits of Nagbhat. A Pratihara king. Now we go back to the map. This Gujar Pratihara, there is a Prashasti found in Gwalior. Gwalior is located here. So this is trying to say that there is a king. He is from the Pratihara, Gujar Pratihara uh, dynasty, and his name is Nagbhat. And this Prashasti is trying to glorify Nagbhata. In the 12th century, a long Sanskrit poem containing the history of the kings who ruled over Kashmir was composed by Kalan. Now, this book, he has written a book, Kalan, on the history of Kashmir, and it is almost a long Sanskrit poem. Now, main thing about this book written by Kalan or the Sanskrit poem written by Kalan is that. He is using sources to write. He has not been appointed by any king. He is using his sources, which can be believed by the historians. Historians have believed the sources and have agreed what Kalan has written, because the sources are inscriptions, documents, eyewitnesses, accounts, earlier histories to write his account. So he has used various sources, and in this, that means Kalan's work has been. Uh, regarded as very good for historians, it's giving them a lot of information, and he has written the history of kings of the rulers who had ruled Kashmir. Unlike writers of Prasasti, he was often critical about rulers and their policies. So he was not afraid of uh, um, any punishment if the uh, rulers going to give it to him. He was not uh, waiting for any favor or any land grant wealth. Now, in this topic again, we'll go to the notes. Warfare. Now, there were frequent wars between all these dynasties during these five hundred years, just to control their or improve their empire, control other areas, just to expand their empire. They tried to control other areas which were near to them for centuries. Three dynasties: Gujar Pratihara, Rashtrakutas, and the Pala dynasties fought for the control over Kanauj. In Ganga Valley, this conflict is known as Tripartite struggle. Now we'll go back to the map and understand in a better way. Three dynasties: Gujar Pratiharas in Rajasthan, parts of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh; then Rashtrakutas in Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Northern Karnataka; and Palas in Bengal. These three dynasties fought a conflict. For two hundred years, approximately for two hundred years, for the region near Kanauj, Kanauj, as you can see here, it is located in the Ganga Valley near the river Ganga, and this region is very fertile land. So all these three dynasties wanted to control this place because this was a very fertile land, and if this land could be controlled, they could get a lot of tax, and which would ultimately expand their empire. The empire will become wealthy and. Become more powerful. So this struggle for two hundred years approximately was called the Tripartite struggle between these Gujar Pratiharas, Palas, and the Rashtrakutas. Now rulers demonstrated their power and resources by building large temples. So rulers, when they became powerful, when they got a lot of wealth, they started building large temples. This we'll study when we'll be talking about South India's Chola dynasties. And other temples also. When they attacked one another kingdom, they often chose to target temples which were sometimes extremely rich. So when these temples were being built by different kings just to glorify themselves, show their power and wealth, any kingdom which had lost, so the winner king would attack these temples and take away the wealth. One such example we get is of Sultan Muhammad Ghazni. Now we'll go back to the map and understand. Ghazni is somewhere in Afghanistan, out here in the Central Asia, and he attacked India almost every year just to gain the wealth in India. 
He raided the subcontinent almost every year and looted temples like Somnath in Gujarat. Gujarat again I'll show you in the map. Gujarat is this part and Somnath temple was looted by Muhammad Ghazni. Now Muhammad entrusted a scholar named El, El Bruni. His Arabic word known as Kitab Il Hind remains, remains an important source for historians. Now this Muhammad he appointed El Bruni to write on his uh, victories in the subcontinent and El Bruni he wrote this book Kitab Al Hind in Arabic with the help of Sanskrit scholars. He consulted Sanskrit scholars to his to write his account. So this was one thing very important as this person did not know Sanskrit he took the help of Sanskrit writers to write the history about India and the subcontinent. Now one more ruler is Chauhans. Now Chauhan ruled over the region around Delhi and Ajmer. Chauhans were engaged in conflict with Chalukyas of Gujarat and Gadwals of Western UP. See this is Gujarat and this is Gadwals. This is all after the triple uh, struggle. So these three dynasties fight among themselves and in this Chauhans are the victorious. Now Prithviraj III was a popular Chauhan ruler who defeated Afghan ruler Gauri in 1191 but lost to him in 1192. So Muhammad Gauri in 1100 of Tarai, Muhammad Gauri lost. To Chauhan. But again next year in 1192 Gauri came back and in this battle which is known as the second battle of the Rai, Pithiraj Chauhan lost to Muhammad Gauri and later on 